Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about setting up an electric dive hooker so we can get down and clean up the oceans and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Now I know you're probably thinking, how is me going down to pick up a few tin cans going to clean up the oceans? But if you've been anywhere around the internet this morning, you'll have noticed there's a big project called Team Seas that's all about doing just that. A few weeks ago, Mark Rober and Mr Beast put the call out to other creators to help get the Team Seas project off the ground. The goal of this project is to raise $30 million to remove 30 million pounds of waste from the oceans. Previously, these guys had a project, Team Trees, to raise $20 million to plant trees, and they achieved that. So we know what these guys are capable of. This is looking to raise the bar a bit higher, but it's a really worthwhile cause. I've put a link in the description to donate to this project. 100% of the money being raised is being split 50-50 between two not-for-profit organisations, Ocean Conservancy and the Ocean Cleanup. All right, first step is to get this dive hooker set up. I'd never actually gone down on a hooker before, so there was a little bit to learn getting it set up. Recently we've been doing some scuba diving around the barrier reef and we quickly ran out of compressed air. We're living on the boat, it's actually not that easy to get an air fill, so that was an obvious limitation. Because of that, I started looking at an electric compressor to run from the boat, so we had virtually unlimited air. Did a bit of homework and eventually decided to get one of the Nardi 24 volt units, so I'll show it to you and show you what I liked about it. This is it, bought it from AC Diving down in Melbourne. The two main things I liked about the Nardi compressor is that it is 24 volt, which my boat is, and it's a twin piston compressor rather than just a little diaphragm compressor. It also has a steel reservoir here to hold pressure and a pressure switch, so it'll fill the reservoir, cut the compressor out, then as you draw the air, it'll kick back in. So really nice setup, I think. Very, uh, very robust, has very good uh, record for reliability as well. Here on the top of the reservoir here, you can see the filter for it. These are obviously serviceable, you can buy spares, but they do last quite a while. Being an electric motor and an oilless compressor, if the air around you is good, you should get good air, but you do have the filter as well. Got a couple of gauges here. One is the pressure in the cylinder, and the other is the pressure it's regulated to, to be sent down to the second stage regulators. This pressure here is obviously adjusted, but it's factory set and really shouldn't need to be touched. Then on the top here, simple on-off button. Some units come built into a float. I decided I like this one. I can just lift it by one hand, put it down in the lazarette. But if I wanted to, I could pop it in Red Dwarf along with a battery and still take it into a shallow area and just have Red Dwarf anchored nearby. So I think this gives me the most flexible setup for the sort of uh, boating I do. These are the two hoses and regulators that come with the air compressor. Now, these hoses are 12.5 metres long each, so pretty long. Certainly enough to be able to plug it straight into the compressor and do a dive either directly under the boat if it's shallow, like it was at Lady Musgrave, or also just to check your prop and, you know, give the transducers a wipe, that kind of thing. There is an extension, so these are 12.5 metres long each, and then there's another single extension that is 25 metres long. You also get a Y piece, which you can use in any combination. You could have the 25 meter coming in, the two 12s off, or one person quite close to the boat, so have this straight into the compressor itself. One person on a 12 meter line, then somebody else could be off there on the, you know, 30 odd meters. So up to you what you need. Most of the time I imagine it would be the long hose first, so that the two divers are closer together. I don't have any harnesses to hold the hose on at the moment, so we're gonna rig something up. I'll probably use my BCD originally, but the idea is that you free yourself from a bit of that sort of cumbersome gear, but we'll probably start that way. What I am doing though, is just attaching a short line and some carabiners onto the hose about that distance from the rig. That way, instead of pulling the regulator out of your mouth, the load's taken where the hose is clipped onto you. So I'll show you what I've used to do that. We can move it, but we'll come to about here. I tied just a straight bowline onto the carabiner. Might be nice to splice something up down the track, but we'll see what we end up using permanently. Then I used an icicle hitch to go onto the hose. It means it's got grip when it pulls along the hose, but it's broad enough that it's not gonna constrict the hose and stop the air flowing if there is tension on it. The regulator's on this side, so starting about here, gonna wind this round, 
once, twice, three times a lady. Over, under, over, under, and then through. This means now we can clip this onto ourselves, the hose can be pulled without ripping the regulator out of our mouth and without particularly constricting it and blocking off the air. So we'll do that to both and then we can clip this onto the BCD. To find somewhere nicer to do our first test dive, we headed back round to the west side of Great Keppel Island. The water there was about minus 15 degrees stew, so, you know, not super warm, but not too bad. If anyone's interested in the conversion from Celsius to stew, here's the formula I use. The water here is reasonably cool, so I'm going to be wearing essentially a full wetsuit, which means I'm going to be quite buoyant. So getting enough weight to sink is probably going to be an issue. I did do a bit of an experiment seeing how much weight it took for me to sink while wearing the BCD. A BCD is a vest like this that you wear when you're scuba diving. It's both a harness to hold your scuba tank on and it's inflatable. The trouble with this is there's quite a lot of air trapped in it, you know, in the pockets, in all sorts of areas. So it provides quite a bit of buoyancy. And because we're using the hooker, we don't have the weight of a steel scuba cylinder on top of, you know, our regular gear. So it took me quite a lot of weight to sink. Fortunately though, Damien and Jess came to the rescue from Project Brewpeg and posted my backpack, my simple backpack that I'd left up at their boat. So this is what I'll predominantly be using. When commercial divers use a hooker system to provide air from the surface, they'll also carry a scuba cylinder on the back that they call their bailout bottle. If there's a problem with their surface supply in any way, hose gets cut or the compressor dies, whatever, it means they've got a completely independent air supply in the back to surface and do all the required decompression stops on the way back up. So I don't think it hurts me to have the potential to use that setup as well for some of the slightly deeper dives. The webbing for this harness is pretty much the same as the webbing for a standard dive belt, which means I can feed some of these three pound weights onto the harness itself. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. The final configuration I go with for this backpack is two three pound weights threaded on to the shoulder straps. And that seems to be about right. Here on the back, you can see I've threaded this stainless loop through the strap here. So I've got somewhere to clip the carabiner from the air hose onto. The wetsuit I'm using is a relatively thin sort of uh, free diving wetsuit really. And I've got two one pound weights in the pockets on the back here. This is doubly helpful in that later in this video, I take the top of this wetsuit off just to experiment with different configurations. And by and large, these two pounds offset this half of the wetsuit. I become a little bit heavier, but it beats taking this off and then suddenly sinking like a stone. So it's a chance to remove some buoyancy and some weight simultaneously. This is gonna be a little bit of trial and error, so I won't sort of bore you with the whole process, but I think it's good to have some sense of what it's gonna to take to sink wearing a wetsuit, what it takes when you don't, just so you've got some idea of how much lead to buy, for example, if you're thinking of getting rigged up with a hooker system like this. All right, we'll start light. This is me with the wetsuit and the two weights in those back pockets, a couple of pounds. This is without a weight belt. This is the harness with nine pounds on it and two pounds in the back, so 11 pounds all up. It's not too bad. You're kind of floating at that neutral point where the water's about at mask height. So, theoretically, weight belt should make us sink and we can stay on the surface relatively comfortably wearing this. So, holding the weight belt, not gonna put it on yet. Actually still float a little bit, but uh, I reckon if you fin down, but may actually need an extra three still. I think I'd rather put those on the belt than the harness that I'm wearing. That way, when you ditch the belt, you're not struggling to stay on the surface. You know, rather than adding one more to the belt, I'm actually going to add two to the belt and take this one off the harness. I think that's the best combo. This is also the belt I use for scuba, so it's going to be easier to change between using the hooker and using a scuba cylinder without needing a different belt. Another really good feature of this compressor, it has these Tima fittings on them. They 
a bit like a neato fitting where collar goes back, no air comes out of the female while it's uh, got nothing in it. Then once it's on, collar comes forward, it doesn't pull out. But also has this black collar behind here that comes forward and turns to lock. So you can't pull this back and you can't pull the hose out. So it's really double locked. You need to push the collar back to pull it out, but you can also lock the collar from being pulled back. So really secure fitting. I've got it straddling the peak here so it's level again. Then just simply pull up on the on. And there we go. Ready to go. Now, this is the long hose. No air coming out, even though the uh, other end's empty. Then I'm going to put one of the shorter regulator hoses in so that I've just got a single, what's that, 37.5 meter hose. As per the plan, I'm going to clip the regulator onto here and then just pass it over my right shoulder like you would with regular scuba. say that was a pretty successful first test run. Pretty sunny day today and the battery's already back up to 100%, got out of the water an hour or so ago. So really, with the amount of solar we've got, we've got pretty much unlimited diving compared to getting those cylinders filled. So I've got to say, it's definitely a win for this type of shallow water diving that you do around the barrier reef. I think it's a pretty good omen that the very first thing I found was this $1 coin. By donating it to Team Seas, I'm effectively taking a pound of rubbish out of the oceans. And if you're in Europe with the metric system, that's a royal amount of rubbish. This fundraiser is going to be running for a couple of months till the end of the year. And because I'll be back home in a month, one of the things I'm going to do as a part of this project is this. As you saw today, big part of diving is the lead weights you need to dive. So my plan is, if we take a look here in my uh, little metal detecting finds from the time we've been on the reef, got some more cash, donate that. And I'm also going to take all the lead I've recovered from the ocean, including the buckets of lead I've got at home that have all come from either in the water or on the water line at the beaches. I'm going to take all this lead, melt it down and make custom Dango Marine one pound dive weights like this. I'm going to auction them off. When I mold them, I'm going to make them custom with Dango Marine stamped on them, a unique number, and then saying that they are made 100% from lead recovered from the ocean. Then, once the auction's over and they've been sold, I'm going to donate 100% of that money to the Team Seas project. Well, thanks for watching. Please consider clicking on the link in the description to donate to Team Seas, and I'll catch you next week. See ya.